Do you know what it's like to lose a child, do you? Because I can tell you exactly what it's like to lose a child. Well, it's terrible. And when it's due to chemicals, it's even worse. Much worse. So it's about time you people woke up and stopped fooling around around here and do something. Do something decent. It's been a year and a half since the voices of happy children at play echoed from this neighborhood. Even the birds and squirrels are conspicuously quiet today in this modern day ghost town. This is a portion of the Love Canal residential area whose future dreams ended in a nightmare 18 months ago. After some 40 years of tranquility, more than 80 types of chemicals, many deadly, came alive after their burial grounds were disturbed and sought out the nearby homes. I'm Fran Luca. On Channel 17 Reports this week, we examined still another tragic dilemma facing hundreds more Love Canal residents. They weren't as fortunate as their 237 neighboring families who managed to escape in 1978. The big question is, will bureaucratic red tape be cut in time to give them a new lease on life? Well, here's where it all began. Just how did it start? Well, it started back in 1976-77 when residents who lived right here in the homes on the canal complained to local officials of contamination odor problems. Uh, nothing really became media event or public knowledge until about 78 when the health department came in the spring, uh, did some environmental and health studies, and it resulted in the evacuation of the residents in this area August 2nd of 1978. How the many homes are involved here? There are about 239 homes, uh, 237 residents have now evacuated. Did everybody get out? No, there are still two families who live in what they consider Ring 2, the homes across the street from the actual canal. So do you have any communication with them? Uh, no, we don't. They don't think there's a problem here, and that's why they're still here. They think we're radicals, uh, and we just force government to do something that shouldn't have been done. What was the final straw that got you some action here? I think it was our persistence. You know, we have many people, there's 550 families, who kept saying we are not going to stay here, we're not going to tolerate these health risks, uh, involuntary risks that, you know, we don't want anything to do with. And just persistent, badgering government, fighting, trying to prove there's a health problem and eventually proving there is a health problem in Love Canal, finally got us out of Love Canal, got us the option to leave. Well, what would happen if these people are forced to hang in until all legal options are implemented? Well, that would mean they couldn't leave until after spring. It means we will probably have many more illnesses show up, uh, possibly deaths from exposure. And it means that the emotional problems are just going to be astronomical. And I don't know what could happen because of the emotional. Anything is possible. I mean, the other day it was a lynching mob for the mayor. They expect us to wait till June. I don't know what could happen. I'm really fearful. You're playing with human lives. Anything is possible. You know, when it's your baby and you're watching him deteriorate and somebody's telling you, I'm sorry, lady, I got to get this red tape put together. You just can't understand it. Not when you're fe spoon feeding medicine, not when you have vaporizers and humidifiers and not when you're taking them into the hospital because they can no longer breathe. Not when a baby you've waited for for eight and a half months that you want it so desperately ends up in a stillborn, you know, you, anything is possible with that kind of uh, things happening. Do you know what it's like to lose a child, do you? Because I can tell you exactly what it's like to lose a child. Well, it's terrible. And when it's due to chemicals, it's even worse. Much worse. So it's about time you people woke up and stopped fooling around around here and do something. Do something decent. And care about the people that live in this city. I won't stay in this city. I don't want to. And I was born and raised here and I always stood up for this city. 42 years I've been in this city. And now I don't give a darn about it. And, and I won't stay here anymore. Well, they don't care about what's going on. They'd love to just chop off those few blocks and deny that they even own them. Well, they've done that all through the Love Canal. How many more children do have to die? I'd, I'd like to know that. How many more How liver tests does my son have to have? That's right. These kids are Is he going to grow up? How many more? Is my daughter going to have children? 
Will my next baby be normal? Do you know what they say to us? Will it? Do you know what they say to us? I had a miscarriage last night. Axelrod just tells me, go ahead, you have lots of time. You're young. It's insufficient if you don't hold a child. It's insufficient. It doesn't matter to them. Nothing matters. Our data is insufficient. But the fact remains that Mrs. Kenny lost a child. I lost a baby before it was even born. My next door neighbor here is still born. Her, her son is sick. Her son is sick. How many more kids have to be sick? How many more kids have to die? We're not going to let it happen. We went out now, and we, we've been saying that for a year and a half. Now, what's it take two months since he announced? Carrie said that four days after he announced the house was going to be bought, that assessors would be out. Two months later, they're in there pussyfooting around setting up offices and everything else. Why hasn't the city started things going? I was told, as well as everybody else, that they're waiting for the city. Then they tell you, the, the mayor, Mr. Brilliant, tells you that he's waiting to hear from the city. I talked to well, Tom, what, Tom Tyree in Albany, and he told me it was up to the mayor. <coughs> now, why, does the mayor, why is the mayor giving us all these stories all the time? If he doesn't want to deal with the situation properly and handle it like an intelligent person instead of some dummy, he should step down. And it's about time he did. Why is he He should have refused it when he was offered being head of this because he, he's never wanted to have anything to do with Love Canal. He has never responded to any resident in Love Canal as far as our situation. All he said to me ever was, don't worry, Grace, in a year you'll be able to sell your house. Well, it's almost two years later. And here I sit. There's no answers to that. I don't have answers. No, nobody, nobody does. does. Nobody All does. All we're saying is get, us, get out. us the hell out of there. That's, that's, that's the answer. answer. That is the answer right there. And no, it no. still isn't being done. Why? Because red tape, politics, lawsuits. We don't give a damn about the lawsuits. That's right. I could care less about a lawsuit. All I'm talking about now is life. We want to start living again. We want to have normal lives. I want my kids to start living normally. I want to stop shaking. I want to start sleeping at night. I don't want to have to, my house is boarded up and it's being uh, vandalized. I don't know what's happening over there. I live in Lockport. I can't be here every day. And the security's supposed to watch my house. Well, like hell it is. Nobody's watching my house. And nobody else is around there either. Inside the fence, the damn houses or garages are being burnt. Houses are being painted. Windows are being broken. They get inside our houses, mister, and you know what's going to happen? They're going to they're gonna rip it apart. And then what kind of money are we going to get for it? I have a house already bought. I'm waiting. All we're waiting for is these stupid people to get off their fat asses and get going. I want to move into my new house. I want to start living again. I want to forget about the baby I lost. Not forget, I'll never forget the baby I lost, but I just want to put it in my past. I can't because I'm reminded every day by these idiots. And then you ask us to be understanding or to be satisfied with an answer, I'm sorry. We cannot be and we will not be. You want us out of your hair? Get us out of there. And believe me, we don't want to see you any more than you want to see us. That's the bottom line. And if they were smart enough in there, they'd know it. Good. And we're not leaving here until we get any answers. Decent, intelligent answers. You've been viciously criticized for having no compassion for the Love Canal families. How do you answer those charges? Well, I can't agree with them, and yet I understand uh, their feelings. Uh, it's a very emotional issue. It's an issue with no easy answers and no quick answers. And I have to say that uh, uh, as a person who is occupying the, uh, the office of mayor, when this problem first started to arise and we started to meet, I went out into the area and I also went to the meetings and I sat as a citizen in the audience and listened, trying to find out exactly what the problem was. They were upset and did not know what it was, and we as, as public officials really didn't know. We had our health department in the county examining them. We had requested people from other agencies to take a look. No one could turn to us and say, this is what it is, this is what you should do. As far as being uh, compassionate for them, I, I have certainly a compassion for the people in the area. I can't, as a mayor though, jeopardize our city. I am concerned about the people, all of them. And the first responsibility I have is for the health and welfare of our people. And then after that becomes the others, the financial and so on. But we are at the throes of a very, very su serious financial attack also. And if I make some mistake 
and statements I make, and I'm continually being cautioned by our legal advisors to be careful not to make blatant statements that later could incriminate the city. Because I am to be a responsible person, and so a real statement that would implicate the city in some way could be eternally held against the city in the laws of the court. And so I have been cautious there. So sometimes they don't like the idea that I can't answer a question. I, don't, I answer what I can and what I know and what I have uh, reliable facts on. Can you tell me when I won't be cramped up into four little rooms with my mother-in-law? Okay. I mean, a very good mother-in-law. Can you tell me all those things? No, Can you tell me when I'm not going to lose any more children because one is already dead? Please tell me those things. That's what I want to know. We've been waiting here, all of us. There's no one, no one but God himself can answer no, those. No, 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 you can answer if you can tell us. Uh, the two people from the, uh, I answered all the truth I know, and maybe I don't know, but I can't make false promises and I'm not going to. So uh, I'll just tell you what I know that's the truth and that's it. Uh, we've met with Mr. Fargety and his, his assistant, uh, Mr. McIntyre, and uh, to, uh, they head up the appraisers. And the team of appraisers are under them their job is to make the appraisals of the people who wish to be, have their homes appraised. And uh, once, once that's uh, completed and they and their staff handle that, they're from the state and they're the experts on that. What I'd like to ask is that the attorneys now stay here and still try to resolve the most difficult, the only one in the United States of a corporation of this type. And I say to you again, this task force is a task force which has neither authority nor money. Their purpose was to have invite the uh, appraisers in here to do the appraisals, and the second, in and the, they were invited the first meeting. The first meeting they were invited. There was a letter uh, that went to Hennessy. Hennessy assured us that the appraisers would come, if not in the middle of December, assuredly the first part of January. It's the first and part of January. All right. Well, they we were, then let me finish. They, we were told that they would come here. Uh, the team would be here on the seventh of January. Five of the team came yesterday. Uh, today the other two members. Or today this isn't necessarily the other two, but. The, the other two members came today. They go through their functions of appraising homes, which is a professional Starting type of work. This is what we I will let Mr. Fogarty step outside and answer all the questions on appraisals. Once they're completed, the appraisal work is completed, then he sends the appraisal result to the task force, which will hopefully then have a corporation form who can handle it. We get to see the actual appraisal done by them, or are we just going to get a paper that says we get so much for our house. Or are we going to see the worksheet? We are not going to make the offers. The appraisals will be turned over to the mayor and the agency to be formed yeah, by the city will extend offers. Are we going to see the actual offers. sheet that, you, that your you um, turn over appraisers that you turn over? Report. That would be up to the city. I, I have no idea. But I would. We'd have I no way to we'd not, the actual sheet. Sure, we have no way to touch any. Because I don't trust you as far as oh, I can uh, tell you. Well, you're doing that isn't the point. There is no way that I would touch any kind of a, an official document to alter it. So whatever is, whatever is on that, and, and you have not been home. able at any time to say that. Now, I've tried to be frank and honest, and sometimes people don't like so it. Everything's so secretive, I just no, do not trust. No, it isn't trust. secret. Mr. Fogarty, he's been honest. Been honest. He hasn't always said what we want to hear, but he's been honest. Yeah, and you don't always like what I have to say, but I've been honest but in that my doesn't make it honest. I might not I'm know all the answers. You haven't paid attention to what's going to happen If you were honest, we would have allowed an error. Mr. Fogarty will answer any questions, or the questions concerning this. I have one for you before you leave. Will there be somebody down or here that can answer our questions when you are unavailable? I would like to talk to you, if you are representing this group, sometime early to, or tomorrow, because we have a difficulty with that too. And this is one of the things that we talked about. How do we answer the questions or your form the liaison and things like that? We attended that meeting between the mayor and Love Canal homeowners the next day. I asked Lois Gibbs, her feelings on the results. I think it's very frustrating. We open communication somewhat. Uh, they're not going to allow any residents to have any input on the committees, and I think that's a, a bad mistake. Uh, the way that the appraisals are set up and the way the residents will not receive, at least at this time, a uh, notice of what their home is worth is really a hindrance to the residents who are living there because they don't know what to shop for. They won't know anything until May, and it's just um, very frightening to us who are remaining in the area who have uh, severe health problems. One of the things I was interested in, we talked about a liaison person between the city and the residents um, and the groups such as ours, the Technical Task Force, out in the Love Canal area. And the mayor seemed to be very um, 
adamant about having uh, a liaison person, except that he didn't know where he was going to get it. He said, with no funding, um, we don't have one, and it's hard to get a person, but we should have some person in some place to be a reference point. It was one of the things I tried to emphasize to him that I do think there should be a, a liaison person between this office of the mayor here and the rest of us out in the Love Canal area to keep communications open. That is the biggest problem. Right, what is the mission of your task force? No, the task force came about, uh, legislation was passed that appropriated about five million dollars from some uh, urban renewal monies in the state. And they appropriated to the Niagara Falls area to and assigned uh, about 12 persons and uh, the governor appointed me as chairman. The task force is to get in motion the corporate action or entity enabling them to stabilize and revitalize the area. Now what we want to do is to stabilize the personnel there. Some want to move, some do not. We want to revitalize the area so that there's extreme confidence that they can live as normal beings, healthy and confident in the area. So it's a dual mission. It's a difficult mission. And once this was brought in, this task force, uh, which has no power, real power, which has no money, there's no enabling legislation, it's like an ad hoc committee, it has no uh, uh, money to spend on staff and the like to do things. But what has been going on is that immediately, the first meeting, which was held on November the 30th, we requested the state to provide us with appraisers. And appraisers uh, were to be sent to us, one or so tried to be set in December, but firmly set in print that they would have them here January the 7th. Now these appraisers are brought from different uh, jobs that they have in the state and brought into our area in residence for that temporary time. They did arrive. Five arrived on uh, Friday, uh, Monday, January the 7th, and two more on the January the 8th. And they have set in motion this appraisal uh, procedure. Now, sometimes uh, people also get misled by this. If they call and they say, have they started the appraisers? The general answer is yes, they're here, they're doing their work. But they're not in any homes yet. The results of the meeting that day was the first appraisals will begin in January, the last week in January. The homes will be appraised at fair market value. Now, one other thing Joe Fogarty told me to mention is they will be out this week taking photographs and measuring. So if you see somebody measuring your front yard, please don't panic. They're just doing it so they don't have to do it later. It makes it easier and quicker. Mayor O'Loughlin, who heads up this task force, has been severely criticized for not moving fast enough to assess these homes outside of the two rings of homes. Is this criticism justified? No, it isn't. Uh, because of the nature of the problem, uh, there has been many things that have to have been done along the way. Uh, establishing an entity, which has been a topic of much conversation, is in the process right now. Uh, we've had to gather together the appraisers, and because of the time of the year with the holidays, we had difficulty getting these gentlemen in and from out of town. And uh, as things are going right now, uh, we have the appraisers in town. We are working on the entity, and we are also working on the federal aid. So the criticism has been unjustified. There are about 550 homes in the area in question, and I understand about 450 of these homeowners are interested in having their homes assessed. Why do they have to wait until all of the assessments are done before they can find out how much their home is assessed for? As it stands right now, the, the state appropriation, uh, which was $5 million, was also based on the garnering of federal funds. And if we went on a piecemeal basis, as each appraisal came in and started making an offer, we could very well end up having uh, many more homes purchased than we have dollars for. So the only wise thing to do is to get all the appraisals in, find out what parties are interested, and at the same time, continue to seek the federal funds that are so necessary for the program. Now the homeowners 
is that five million dollar price tag going to be able to take care of everybody no nowhere and near enough it's going to cost at least ten million for the homeowners alone and that's not even counting what happens with the they sell development people in the low-income housing project as the mayor indicated where the other five million would come from if needed no he hasn't he said that there may be five million from various agencies but that won't be available until they form this corporation who will then put in the request for it from the federal government or the state or whatever. Which again, you're talking about five million until May, at which time they'll put a request in for an additional five million. The door is open, and this is what we're trying to do, is to seek more funds. We're very concerned about the amount of money, but we do have five million dollars and we're going to get all we can out of five million. It won't be the entire no. Project. I would say it can't be the entire project. There's not enough money, I don't believe, for what we would like to do as an end product. Now, the, uh, the uh, determination of a person of whether they want to buy or sell their house or not, they have two years to decide. So once they get their appraisal in hand, uh, they can then sort of determine, uh, do I want to move? Do I not want to move? They can examine the outer market and see what the, what the market is and have two years to decide. What happens when the allocated $5 million for the purchase of some of these homes runs out? Where will the additional monies come from? That is what we're working on right now. As you're aware, the Governor Kerry has sent a letter to the President requesting a meeting. And the basis of that is that the federal lawsuit, which was recently filed against Tooker, contained many of the very claims that were made and the state of New York's original application for aid when it was made to the FDAA a number of months ago. Uh, that, at that time, the federal government refused our application, and we feel, based upon their lawsuit, that uh, our meeting should have a, a more success this time, that the federal government should become involved. And uh, it, it's awful important to the success of that program that the federal government does decide to get involved in the program now. Well, somebody's going to be left out. How are they going to determine who's going to get out? Well, I don't think anybody's going to be left out because the homeowners won't allow this. I mean, if Mrs. Kenny's going to go and I'm going to go and Sister's going to stay here for, uh, and help the people fight, we'll fight until everybody's out. We've done it for a year and a half and we won't stop. So if there's $5 million, we'll fight until there's another $5 million appropriated. And if there's another $5 million needed, we'll fight for another $5 million. And, uh, you know, everybody, it's, it's like anything else. What they do for one, they have to do for all. What kind of a feeling do you have returning to your abandoned home? Very disappointing. I bought the house in September of 75, and now we've owned the house for one year, and now we had to abandon it because of the Love Canal. Why did you and your wife move out? What was the reason? Well, I didn't want my wife uh, having any chemicals in her. We're planning on having a family, and. Uh, Dr. Pagan says we should be out of the area for six months before we have any children. Were there any testings done here to determine if any of the chemicals had leached this far in? Yes, there was a air sample in the basement that they took and a soil sample in the front. And uh, the results of the air sample were very high for one chemical and the other three were normal. Will you be able to get a home comparable to this? Yes, uh, at a higher price range, though. How long do you think you'll have to wait for your money from the state? Uh, knowing the state, I don't know. Uh, it could be six, eight months, a year, who knows. Will you be able to handle it without getting your money from the state prior to uh, a purchase? I, it's doubtful. I have a friend that might help me out, and uh, if I'm fortunate, he will. I noticed that uh, your furniture is still intact. It's just like you, you just left for the day. Well, we didn't move anything out because I'm living with my parents. Uh, there's no room for it anywhere. And uh, all we did was move our personal belongings. And uh, we're hoping to get out of here as soon as possible. Are you afraid of possible contamination in some of the household goods? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I've heard that it does affect the houses if they're very close to the canal, and mine is not, so I don't think so. I notice a lot of your neighbors are still here. Have you had any any comment from them about your moving? 
No, I haven't. Uh, I think I'm just one of the fortunate ones being able to have a place to go. Were you or your wife ill at any time uh, within the past year you lived here? The only thing I can say is that my wife had some kidney and bladder infections while she was living here that she never had before. And since we moved out, she's only had it twice, where when we were living here, she had it very often. Were they able to link her illness to the love canal? No, I, I don't see how they could. Now, the, the way I understand it, the revitalization plan calls for relocating another family in a home just like this. What, what do you think of that? It's unbelievable what the state will do and they know that there's a health problem here and they still continue to let people live here. It's disgusting. When you say resell these houses, do you mean bring in new families to the houses that are being sold and abandoned? Yes, that is our intention at this time, or at least one of the things that will be reviewed by this new entity. What safety assurances are there for the new families coming in? That based upon the success of the work that has been completed already. The many millions of dollars that the state has spent on the, uh, re the repair work in the canal area. We feel based upon that the area is safe and also based upon the health reports that are, are available as of this day. I hear there is talk of actually moving people back into this boarded up area. That's very true. Uh, the Revitalization and Stabilization Committee, which is now set up and chaired by our mayor, plans on moving people back into the area and cleaning it up, planting new trees, uh, replacing things and making it look nice. Uh, we plan on stopping that. You know, even though the residents now can leave the area, uh, can start their lives again, we're going to make sure that nobody else has to suffer what we've been suffering for the last year and a half and for the time that we've lived here in Love Canal. If you left the Love Canal alone today and didn't touch it again, how many years would it be before it would be safe to live there again? I'm not sure it would ever be safe to live there again. I think we've destroyed that area. Some of these chemicals are persistent. They last for a long time. And in the last 25 years, the area has become progressively worse, and I think in the next 25 years, we'll see it get worse rather than better. Is there any chance that this may spread to an area even outside of the 550 homes we speak of? I think so. For instance, in Wheatfield, they're actually putting in sewers and planning construction in an area that has contaminated soil. It's at the end of one of the underground streams that leads from Love Canal. That area is now fields. It is not hurting anybody except the wildlife. But the town of Wheatfield is going ahead and permitting construction in that area. So we're going to add, I don't know if it's homes or stores or offices, but we're going to add more human exposure to Love Canal chemicals right at the edge of Love Canal. In other words, in another 20 years, we may have another Love Canal crisis. Right. Another thing is we feel that 
even though it's cleaned up, we couldn't come back in this area to the present homes, obviously. Why not? Well, because they're all contaminated, and there's no way well, you can... Well, supposing vents and so forth were put in, and you had assurances I, from the experts that it was okay. From what I understand from the expert is even venting that's in your wall.